the storm howled outside the church, battering endlessly against the window. Near the altar, a hooded man was crouched in a hastily drawn star that had several points. On each point was a candle. The man also held one. He seemed to be praying, but the twisted smile on his face showed otherwise. There comes a time when the fire must burn no more. The old wooden door suddenly opened and invited the wind's howl. Life Taker stood up, his scarred face lit by the flashing of lightning. A man dressed in priestly robes stood on the threshold. As he stepped forward, the door slammed shut. What is this heresy? He was staring down Life Taker. What do you think you're doing? Life Taker laughed and grabbed his collar. He threw him into the seven point star and pressed down on the priest's chest with his black boots. This isn't your home anymore. Can you not see all that they are? Cracks are showing by the faith. Corruption is coming. Alarms blared as personnel fled at the exophage. Swarms of nanobugs, designed formerly to heal and repair, had been reprogrammed by something. They had begun the conversion. Dr. Johansson watched from his office. As his fellow colleagues fell under the swarm, their skin and bone transformed. They became cybernetic beings. The Alpha was their collective conscious, and it too now roamed the facility. All efforts to contain it had failed. The Alpha was near destructible, his body had become fused with an exoskeleton, his mind subjugated by the AI implant. All that I am is a product of science that you are no doubt aware of. As for me, well my story is a long one. I once worked as an agent for the Fendite Corporation. It was the same old ops, infiltrate, secure or sabotage, no questions asked. I got the job done. Then, I had to infiltrate the Genesis lab. That place was a hornet's nest, very secretive, but the payout, it was worth the risk. Looking back, maybe I was wrong. They could see into some of the laboratories. So many passed through and not many returned. They pick people off the street and use the JR on them, daring to make it as potent as possible. It can render people with no cognitive abilities. They become shells. And those that survive, asked Falconer, they become Yale's pets. A solid steel briefcase was placed on the loading table. It would be used to transfer the vials. He approached the JR storage machine and carefully removed the Omega-1 vial. That was the specific request. It made him think back to the phone call many months ago. He sat whistling in the armchair. His bodyguard stood close by. It was to be a temporary partnership. Falconer was assigned to assist in the second stage of this operation. They just had to wait for the phone call to ring. The minutes passed laboriously. Rykard was becoming impatient. The silence was finally broken by the ringing next to him. The voice spoke first. Is this Dr. Aldrich? Yes, answered Rykard. My employer believes we are at the stage where we can complete this operation. You have successfully gained Yale's favour, and as such, we are aware that you are able to access Level Zero. All that we ask is that you acquire a sample of the original formula. Is that it? Yes. When will I get paid? When we can be sure that the job is done. One final thing. This needs to be done with as little mess as possible. Before Rykod could answer, the man hung up. 